Hello everyone, my name is Charlie, welcome to the channel. Today we are painting up the Sniper Boy from the Orc Commando set. Today I'll be adding another Orc to the team, this will leave us with two unpainted minis from the whole unit. In this video, previously mentioned techniques like base coating, shading and mixing colors will be covered with the addition of some simple glazing. Glazing can sound daunting at first, but once having a go at it, you'll find it's not too difficult. So let's get started. The Mini has been primed with Vallejo's black primer and given a zenithal highlight with an off-white to help bring out the details. This white also helps with the paints that have weaker coverage. This Mini has been built in sub-assemblies in order to have better access to the model's difficult to paint areas. The backpack and weapon are blue tacked to a small piece of wood while the body is blue tacked to its base. The base was built at the same time as the Mini, but after moving the base and perhaps dropping it a few times, some parts decided to fall off, but these problems will be addressed after the painting is done. To start off the paint job, I've added Bugman's Glow to the palette and thinned it down with water. Two, three layers of this warm skin color will cover the torso and arms of our orc. By applying this paint, we create the illusion that there is some blood pulsing under his green skin. Once we have good coverage, I'll mix a dark green to the previous color and thin it with some more water. This light brownish pink will be the base of the greens to come. I'm applying it very thinly to the upper facing parts as I don't want it to fully cover the Bogman's glow undercoat. This mix has left the mini a bit stained and without contrast. To pull these colors together and add more definition to the cracks and crevices, I use a thin downwash Kerborg Crimson. But this time, instead of water, I use a different product, Lamian Medium. If you add too much water to a wash, it loses its potency and leaves behind unwanted splotches of color. This is also called coffee staining. After my mix is ready on the palette, I start applying it on the mini, making sure it covers all the fleshy areas. This red wash needs a bit more time to fully dry, so I leave it for about half an hour. Once it's dry, I grab my green paints and starting from the darkest, I paint it on with thin layers, but leaving a few cracks like the spaces between his fingers or joints with the first skin color. When this step is done, I grab my medium green and mix it with the previous dark green. I add more water than usual to the mix in order to create a glaze. Before placing the brush on the mini, I would advise to first dab it on a paper towel to soak up the extra moisture. If you have too much water in the brush's bristles, the color will spill over areas that you don't want to affect. While applying the glaze, you can see that the most paint gets deposited at the end of the brush stroke, meaning the color will be the strongest there. Keeping this in mind while painting helps us to define the transition between colors. Consequently, this also means that we need to use several layers to achieve a desired look. So don't be discouraged if you don't have a nice transition after two or three layers. It can take much more than that, just try to be patient and trust the process. When I'm done with the dark and medium green mix, I move on to only using the medium green. Thinning it down to a glaze and painting it on the upward facing parts of the skin leaving the shadowy areas untouched. This will create contrast on the mini as if the sun would be shining on him. This step also takes a couple of layers. After this step I'll add my brightest green Oruk Flash to the Castellan green and paint it on with the same technique but covering even less area. Finally, glazing Oruk Flash only on the highest points, mainly focusing on his face, ears and the top of his head. His teeth, eye sockets and nails are painted with a warm white color, leaving one tooth out as it's actually a bullet. When these parts are base coated, I grab a wash and a red contrast paint to paint in his eyes. I would like his eyes to look really menacing, so the red glow will contrast nicely with the green skin. Adding some purple to my white, I create a mix that will cover his gums. This color also gets painted on his knuckles and elbows to imitate rougher skin. These areas also receive a thin layer of a red wash. To emphasize his eyes, I add a drop of orange to their center. To add some life and color to his teeth, I apply a layer of sepia wash and once that's dry, I paint the tips with the previously used warp white. Since orcs think the sneakiest color is purple and this guy is some sort of a sniper, I thought a purple jacket would fit him well. I take the previously used purple color on its own and apply it in about two layers. 
His jacket and upper arms get coated with it, while I try my best not to paint over his skin. When the jacket was done, I started to tackle the leathery bits around his torso. These parts get covered with a warm brown color, catechin flesh. The metallic parts, like the buckles, weapons and bullets, get painted over with a steel color, lead belcher. To shade these areas, I used two washes, Carbor Crimson for the jacket, as I thought red would complement nicely with purple, and Agrax Earthshade brown wash for the leathers and metallics. After the washes have dried, I picked up the base colors again and painted them on the raised areas, leaving the shades in the recesses to define the shadows in the folds and corners. To smooth out the transition, I've diluted the purple to a glaze consistency and painted it on again. Once that was done, I've added great bone to the same color and painted the mix on the upper facing areas, creating more contrast in the fabric. After this step, I've added even more white to the mix and painted that on the edges of the jacket. I've reapplied catechin flesh on the leather surfaces. To highlight them, I've grabbed steel agent drab and painted it on the edges and dry brushed it on the leathers to suggest wear and tear. Also, I've used this color to base coat the bag on his side and the belt that's holding his weapon. At this point the torso was almost ready, so I've decided to move on to other parts of the mini. Starting with his pants, which got painted with Vallejo's German black-brown, dark brown color. The straps around his wrist got coated with steel legion trap. His boots were painted with Abaddon black, a glossy black paint. The weapon handle and his nails were painted with Basilicanum gray, a dark contrast paint. The newly base coated parts received a wash of Agrax Earthshade. I've mixed the base color with catechin flesh and painted it on in several layers, making sure the brush stroke ends on the highest, most upward facing point. When that was done, I used catechin flesh on its own and applied it similarly. To achieve an even lighter shade of brown, steel legion drab was added to the catechin flesh. And finally, just on its own, steel legion drab was stippled and dry brushed on the most raised surfaces to suggest a worn leather. The same technique was used on the boots. Mechanical standard grey was mixed with Abaddon black. At this point I felt that the grey and black contrast was too harsh, so I've used watered down Nolan oil, a black wash, all over the boots to blend the colors together. To highlight the metallics, I've used Lead Belcher, Stormhost Silver and Retributor Armor. First I've added a layer of Lead Belcher on the steel surfaces, making sure it doesn't get into the recesses. After that, I've used the Stormhost Silver to dot the sharpest highlights of the rivets and edges of the steel items. Then I used my main gold color to reapply the shell casings. With the main body done, I could start working on the backpack, which was base coated with mechanical standard grey. The belt holding the bullets received two layers of catechin flesh by go-to leather color. The smaller straps were painted with steel legion drab. I'd like to mention that between each section I go back to the base colors and paint over the spilled areas just to keep the mini tidy. That bercher was painted on the bullets just as before. The grenades were base coated with our medium green color Castellan Green. After the grenades were painted, I grabbed a black and brown wash and I painted them all over the backpack. Brown on the leathers, black on everything else. This step helps to define all the little shapes and corners. When the washes dried, I came back with the base colors and painted them on again, but leaving the recesses darker. I've added Raidbone to the base color to achieve a lighter gray tone. This was painted on the most raised surfaces and upper parts of the folds. Finally, Raidbone on its own was used for the brightest highlights. A mix of catechin flash and steel legion drab was used to base coat and highlight the bullet holding belt. Hubbard hide was used to highlight the smaller belts and seams. The grenades were highlighted with the same method using Castellan Green and Oroch Flash. The metallics were highlighted with the same colors used on the body, Lead Belcher, Stormhost Silver and Retributor Armor. After finishing the backpack, I moved on to painting the rifle. My current darker steel color is Lead Belcher, but I wanted something grittier, darker than basic metallic steel. So I mixed it with Abaddon Black at about 2 to 3 ratio and created a dark steel color. Once that was done, I proceeded to paint it on most of the rifle. I followed the previous step by adding a dark bronze color, Balthazar Gold, to the weapon. This was applied on the muzzle and the scope. To add visual interest to the gun, I decided to paint the interlocking part and the crosshair with scarlet red. The leathery part and piece of wood on the barrel got painted with catechin flesh. 
That badger on its own was used to paint the bullets and retribute her armor for the shells. This was followed by an all-over wash of Agrax with her shade to deepen the recesses and to separate the elements of the weapon. A bright white was used to base coat the lenses of the scope. This was followed by a wash of Coelia green shade, a bluish green wash that would suggest the optics of the scope. Catechin flash and Steel Legion drab was used to highlight leathery parts and the wooden bit on the barrel. Retributor armor was used again as the shell's highlight. Lead belcher was used to highlight the steel parts. This was applied in a patchy way to imitate dents and damage to the weapon and also served as a brighter line to highlight the shapes of the rifle. I have used it on the bronze part as well to give a scratch build feeling to it. Storm Hoof Silver was used to highlight the brightest parts of the steel. These were the bolts, rivets and the most upward facing edges. A piston red was used to re-establish the brightness of the red elements. I have left a wash and scarlet red to show in random areas. My intention with this was to further enhance the scratch build look of the weapon. Orange is a great color to highlight red, so I've used Troll Slayer Orange to highlight the upward facing edges and the crosshair. And with this step the weapon was done as well, so I could move on to fix the base. Two parts broke off the base as I was preparing it for painting. I've put these small plastic pieces aside and decided to cover up the holes with the texture paste. For this I used Astro Granite Grey Colored Earth Texture. I've also painted this on the standing piece of plastic as the grit in the paste would give a concrete wall look to it. While that was drying I painted the debris with Balthazar Gold. When the paste dried I've used a mix of browns from my palette and covered the base with it. This was followed by a couple steps of dry brushing. Corex white on the concrete wall and Rakard flash on the ground. By dry brushing these surfaces we enhance the details of the textures making the base more interesting to look at. Once the paints dried, I've used Null Oil and Agrax Earth Shade in a patchy way, blending the two washes on the base, creating a cohesive look of battlefield rubble. There was one last thing to paint, which was the rim of the base, and for this I've used Abaddon Black in a couple of layers. After this step, I assembled the mini with super glue, attached it to the base, and claimed victory. This is the finished Sniper Boy from the Orc Commando set. He's finally ready to join the team. There are two minis missing to finish this kit, they will be painted in the upcoming videos. Thank you for sticking around until the end, if you have any further questions, please leave them down in the comment section below. Thanks again for watching and goodbye.